Good afternoon, and welcome to Will You Review My CV? This is uh, episode number 18. I'm Alan Wozni, your host, and today I'm highlighting two career advice submissions I made on LinkedIn in May 2019. One is a supply chain or procurement specialist out of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and one is a geologist uh, with oil and gas, extensive oil and gas experience based out of Bogota, Bogota in Colombia. I'm going to jump right into the PowerPoint presentation I prepared, which outlines the career advice submissions that I posted in response to the job search appeals that both of these individuals made on LinkedIn back in May 2019. So let me share my screen. All right. And we'll go here, share that, and we'll play from the start. So episode 20, uh, episode number 18, today is the 25th of July and uh, 2021. So the career advice submission was, there was two of them, one uh, episode number 156, uh, Cheryl Norris. She was a supply chain expert and supply chain and logistics expert out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. And then career advice number 175, Maria Jimena Portela out of, uh, she's a geologist out of Colombia. So let's start with Cheryl. On the 20th of May, I came across her post on a, so Vince Procopia and Tony Guo. Uh, Vince Procopia, he is a, he's a recruiter out of the US. I, I think he's in Dallas. And uh, he's, he's um, I mean, he's got a pretty significant following. So I came across his post or her post. I, I don't really know the details. This is what I copied and pasted, profile. Oh, so she was looking for work. I think profile was they needed a purchaser, buyer, and looking for new new opportunity. So I think that was Vince's post, Vince or Tony. And she replied, me too. Not only painful, but aggravating aggravating as well. So Cheryl had posted this. And, and I look back now and I look back at her profile. Wait, Cheryl's my age. I'm 55. And I look at her profile and uh, she's worked extensively. She's had significant experience. And so I, I'm not, I mean, there's no judgments here. I just think her, if you look through her profile, she has significant purchasing supervisor experience, or purchasing experience. Uh, I worked in Qatar for three years as a CFO for the, you know, with the procurement team, the supply chain team. I know exactly where her, I didn't sit in her desk, but I know it because of my team, we had to be very creative. And so that role, I think could be very valuable to other start companies, particularly with her number of extensive experience as a broker and buyer and as a purchasing supervisor. So let's look back at my the advice I gave to Cheryl back then. And I literally posted in several posts, not just one post. And I started with Gary Vaynerchuk. I said, for me personally, one of the first keynotes I heard of Gary was, or one of the first times I heard him speak, was a keynote speech he gave in New York in 2008. So I gave that as a reference. I said, for, you know, I don't know what resonates with people. I think Cheryl's, you're in my age, Cheryl, if you're listening to this or get a chance to look at this, if you're my age, I get it. You know, you've worked many years and suddenly you found yourself uh, without a job. This was 2019. COVID's probably made that even harder. But so Gary Vaynerchuk, a good start. I started with Gary in 2018, March-ish, and it's, it's helped me a ton. And then I went to some career guidance sites and said, here you go, Fairy Godboss and landed. I follow Gary, Gary Godboss, Fairy Godboss on, on Instagram. They have some wonderful posts. Landed, landed and Fairy Godboss are very women-focused, uh, looking at what your careers. And so there's probably a lot of um, female-oriented uh, information and guidance that they give. And then I gave other Zippy as a career kind of things, uh, career advice, uh, the post on there. And this was two years ago. So it was really new for me because I've been overseas for 18 years and I've said this before. And then some other uh, websites, uh, recruiting sites, people have their own. So I don't, I don't make judgments about what, what's there or not there. Aver Talent, Startups and Candidates, so Career Arc, using social media to help recruit, Convey IQ, it's, it's really engaging the candidates. Jitjat Joe, I love the name, for one, but it's an on-demand staffing for the service and hospitality industry. I know, I know she's, uh, Cheryl's not in that uh, trade, but these are just some sites. I don't know, Dive, short-term gigs, 
per hourly employees. What I say to many, and I've said this to many uh, in the past on some of these episodes in the past, all of these recruiting sites, they, they, they signal information for that could be valuable to Cheryl or anybody, in, in this case, Cheryl. I would look for what manufacturing companies are hiring, what types of companies, and use that to gauge. I mean, these are, you know, staffing for labor contracts. There's Winolo down there. Winolo probably would probably hire, be hiring, they're probably manufacturing companies or construction sites, might fit into her role. Again, the signaling, it, it, it's not something that's going to be obvious. But if you spend time on these sites and seeing, you know, the, you, you get search agents for different roles, not just your role, but then you get a feel for what these companies are hiring or what, what types of roles are hiring. You could follow them on LinkedIn and see it as well. They, sometimes a lot of companies post, the ones that are posting, not the, the recruiting sites, but the actual company, look at a newsletter, they post on their websites, job openings, but that could be a good signal providing information in addition to the... Um, in addition to some of these these uh, these recruiting sites, so I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. For hourly employees, I don't know what it's like in her market in Tulsa. Like I, Oklahoma, to me is you know Oklahoma City Thunder, basketball, football, high school Oklahoma Sooners. I, I know that that's a real high level, but she, on the ground in Tulsa, I don't know what it's like. So she needs to know her market and, and get to know these companies that are that are listing uh, for role, open roles there. What else? My go-to is AngelList. I, I continue to think AngelList is another signaling who's on AngelList posting. And I, you know, I, I don't know if there's manufacturers on there. There could be, I don't look specifically. Back then they had 17 roles for the state of Oklahoma, 17 roles, not a lot. But uh, today, when I look at 42, uh, if I go to the AngelList, 42 different companies have open, or 42 open roles on the site for Oklahoma, 21 in Oklahoma City, and 17 in Tulsa. So it's improved and not surprising because if you look at the Oklahoma tech innovation uh, that I, it creeps up, this was back in 2019, this little sample of companies. I got seven, uh, eight companies here. Uh, I'll, I'll look later uh, for what it would, today's in 2021. But back then, Associated Material Processing Chemical Polymer Producer. That sounds like a manufacturing or kind of a chemical plant. They would have buying needs. I worked in the Middle East for Qatar Solar. We bought a ton of different chemicals. And my procurement team was very creative, particularly during the blockade. So, you know, that company <laughs> probably has a hiring need. If you're not aware of it, this could be a good way to do it. Medical device, BP Endo. Medical device for colonoscopies. So... Again, it's a manufacturer. This is, if you look at her profile today, Cheryl's looking for roles with a manufacturing company as a buyer, as a procurement agent, supply chain. I don't know where you want to go with that. Pamlico Biopharma. Again, these are some of the companies I referred to her back then. Research for infectious diseases and cancer. I got to imagine they have a supply chain. It might not be manufacturing, but there's a supply chain of parts and, and so forth that they, they could probably use somebody with her expertise. Similarly, Progentech Diagnostics, Therapeutic Diagnostics. I don't know if these companies produce anything or if they have a therapeutic diagnostics. It could just be a uh, maybe research in people and not much parts. Raw space for rent, warehouses. People that rent the warehouses could be manufacturers or, or small businesses that have a, a need to buy and, and buy goods for their, for their business. Roll to roll to think, just wait, keep in mind. This is back in May 2019. I didn't, this was just what I picked up from Oklahoma Tech Innovation, that landscape back then. Um, so these companies still probably still exist. Roll to roll technologies, reduce wastage in manufacturing. Their clients would be manufacturers. So, you know, getting familiar with this technology may be beneficial. And this goes to some of the things I've said about SaaS and learning SaaS. This could help. Some of the manufacturing companies she's applying to, it could improve the dialogue or discussions that she has or does not have with companies or could potentially have. Send a ride, non-emergency medical transportation. You know, I, again, I can't, I can't judge their, their buying. I, I'd reach out to the buying, the, their buyer or their purchasing agent and say, hey, I'm just looking for advice. How do I get into this, this field, uh, whatever. Whiteboard Mortgage CRM, probably the only company 
It's a platform for helping people find mortgages, uh, whether it's commercial or residential. I, I don't know the details. Sorry, Cheryl, that one probably doesn't fit, but it just gives you the indication that the landscape, it's people are, the countries, the city, the, the state is growing. So then I looked back in, um, you know, again, because I worked with, with the supply chain team, I, I, there was a team of 15, Andrew Spencer, uh, you know, the, the, guy, there was a, the guys in that team were constantly, constantly back in 2017, 18, constantly ordering parts. So when I was learning about tech, I kind of had, you know, my, my eyes were attuned to the, the supply chain, you know, text that came up, things that rolled up in my, in my feed, my newsletters. So I, I kind of lumped it into back office supply chain and delivery. These are just arbitrary. These classifications mean nothing other than where I threw that into. So let's look at some of the back office. This is back in 2019. I posted, uh, you know, what I thought were applicable to her job, her job function, her experience. 3G TMS order. I don't know where these are based. So these are not based in Tulsa, Oklahoma. These are just supply chain startups. 3G TMS order to cash process. That's the buy. You know, that's buying the goods for the company. Airspace automated shipping notifications. Shipmonk. I love the name. Fulfillment and shipping. Zen Cargo. They're using machine learning to help companies move cargo. Move cargo. So you know, obviously, using trigger points throughout uh, the, the the supply chain process. Supply chain itself, flow space, warehouse and fulfillment, spec right. Customers can control the supply chain specifications. Stored, warehouse and uh, distribution. Suchi. I like the name. I think it's a Japanese origin as well. Supply chain for fashion brands. So, you know, these are things, maybe not directly to her manufacturing experience, but any people she's speaking to, these could be opportunities to use these software, uh, these types of software in their businesses. Bring, I love the name, delivery logistics platform. Cargomatic, connect shippers and carriers. Huge, during all this stuff, during COVID, supply chain, huge disruption. Any innovation can help companies, has helped companies in COVID, pre-COVID, it was building up as important. Uh, Post-COVID or now this later uh, sort of late resurgence in COVID, very important supply chain and in having uh, the more automation that can help companies the better. Flexport, air and ocean freight, again, roadie, sorry, again, Flexport, this is automation. This isn't just some kind of, you know, uh, you know some kind of an onboarding for air and ocean freight. This is probably linked into their existing supply chain. The APIs are talking to one another. This isn't some kind of separate big massive system. These are very, very uh, low entry, easy to use, low tech entry, you know, for low tech users. The last one's Rody. I like Rody. It's out of Atlanta. I remember this because I had some friends that lived in Atlanta, so it was kind of relevant. But Rody just says, we'll pick up delivery. So less, it's called less than truckloaders, LTL or something like that. But they pick it up along the way. So you get push notifications. Hey, we got, we've got an empty, we got enough for package size or whatever. And so if you align that with different manufacturers, maybe you got small loads to go across, uh, to across the U S I don't know the highway that goes from, from Atlanta across to Tulsa, but I'm sure Rody would be probably somebody in her manufacturing companies in Tulsa or Oklahoma would understand or know about or heard of someone like them. Okay. And then because Cheryl is very experienced, she's mature. She's, she, she has a business. She's, she's worked with different businesses over her career. I go to my, my go-to is the other go-to is the, the venture capital companies because venture capital, it's more, you know, people, I think more mature would get this because if you look at the portfolio companies of a venture capital in any, any city, any state, any country, they tend to have, they invest in startups or other businesses around them. So I did a deep dive. Back then, I just gave the names of the Oklahoma-based venture capital companies. I didn't go into deep dive. I didn't look at them. What do they actually invest in? So today, I did that to make relevance to if Cheryl was looking at this today, or if I was to look at this today and give you more targeted advice. I went and did a deep dive into the portfolio companies relevant to Cheryl's experience as a supply chain procurement expert. So I2E Inc. 
V6 Labs is the is a, they make they make products so manufacturing something I can't remember what Spire's new tech making technology products so manufacturing valve systems I think it's oil and gas Oklahoma's big in oil and gas they make valves for the oil and gas industry that's a manufacturing company and then RX Destruct that's a pharmaceutical company or a, a, to 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 destroy I think waste material or something like that or waste in that in you know in that so there's a supply chain aspect to that. The chemicals that they use for destroying pharmaceuticals or waste material, uh, you know, ph medical waste. Again, there's no secret to this. I don't know, but if she's following them and following those startups, she might get some signals as to what their hiring needs or what some of their needs are. Spur Capital, I gave that as a list. It's a fund of funds. They just invest in other, they just invest in companies, not in particularly in startup like a venture capital. Uh, Seed Step Angels. They co-invest with other VCs, including the first one, I2E Inc. So that's that's another one I listed out there. But again, it's, it's, this is her community. It's not my community. This is Oklahoma. Cowboy Tech Angels. I looked at uh, their detail. Two relevant ones, Ground Metrics and Vigilant Aerospace. Right in, in I, I don't know if that's in Tulsa or, or not, but it's this is the companies they're investing in. So they're manufacturing related. I like this one, Oklahoma Center for the Advancement of Science and Technology. Nothing specific that I could say that picked up there, but again, it's just awareness of what's happening in your community. And then the one over here, OSU, that's the Oklahoma State University New Product Development Center. Connect businesses, manufacturers, and inventors. So these are around her area. Like these are startups, but they're just not your mainstream. They're outside the norm, which you take the norm, but the norm has changed. So, and the last one is, the Oklahoma Manufacturing Alliance, which speaks right to Cheryl, um, they include Manufacturing Workforce Committee. And it, on the website, it says over the last five years, we've created 5,300 jobs. So I don't know, Cheryl, I mean, you're, that's, if, if I was you in that community, I'd be looking for these other things outside the box. They're not the norm. The recruiters may be aware of this stuff, if not. But imagine your discussions, if you got aware of some of these centers and saying, hey, are they hiring? And if you got to create some more awareness, the links might come. So if I was to go back today, July, tw you know, today's 25th of July, what would I do over? What would I den amend addendum to this? I've had the luxury of also looking at information and giving the career advice. This was number 156. I've done 420 plus. And the reason I say 420 plus is because not all of them, I don't, I don't save every single thing I give. I throw some of them, I just give them out there. So it's 420 plus, but 420, I have the actual details like Cheryl's. Gary Vaynerchuk, he did an episode, I think January, 2020, just before COVID. It was with a guy called Chip Conley and it was called the Midlife Wisdom School. And this is what I remember. And this resonates well with Cheryl because you're my age, Cheryl. I'm not, no, no judgment here. Huge swath of life called midlife from 45 to 65, where there are no safety nets or supports for these people. People have lost their job mid-career. They've worked all their lives for companies or they worked all like doing the same thing and they can't find a job. So he's written a book. It's called The Wisdom of Wisdom at Work, The Making of a Modern Elder. And then he has a school called the Modern Elder Academy. Now, the school is probably out of most people's price range, but the book is probably 10 bucks. Learn about some of the things he's saying, how you can use your, 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 your years of experience to get back to work, whatever it is, whether you're going to entrepreneur school or you bring it to, there's a movie called The Intern with Robert De Niro and Anne Hathaway. And it's, you know, it, it's that old school, old tech, old school, you know, bringing it together. I think some of the startups I mentioned earlier, Cheryl, you could bring that in. You, I mean, it, it's not easy. Yeah, it takes time to do any of this stuff. And that just, just a podcast in her space, warehousing, the, Cal the, the podcast I, I started, uh, one of my episodes, episode 235, I've done 300 episodes of the podcast, Great Space. They're just basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a warehouse sharing place. So for small businesses, shared warehouse for contractors, small enterprise who store their spare parts. Um, and that could be, you know, that could be an angle. I don't know. If, I'm just if there's a local, someone local like that in Oklahoma. We're doing that shared storage space, not storage wars and having this, you know, storage. It's actual someone managing the the, the warehouse warehouse space for small businesses and small manufacturers, like small parts coming in from the airport, being close to. They're up, up by the airport, 
I got to imagine that's probably something you'd be familiar with as well. Some of those brokers, your experience as a broker and a trader and procurement. So bringing those two together, your experience in a shared warehouse space in Oklahoma somewhere, and then, uh, you know, some of the small businesses that can link to that. And so I, I don't, again, I don't know, there, but you know, procurement, you know, supply chain, you know, the ordering process, bringing the two together, I think is, is something could happen. And then I, I looked, it's not easy. It's not easy looking at looking for startups, specifically supply chain or procurement. They don't always come up uh, in the, the symbol like a marketing or accounting or finance or legal, if you type in the hat or artificial intelligence, but I found some things. So recently, actually last week, at about uh, Rain, this thing called Rainforest Alberta, they 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 held the, the, the lunch, lunch without lunch event. So on Zoom, and they focused on adobotics. Now I've, I've known about adobotics. They've raised I think over 100 million here in Calgary, and it's 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 supply chain helping companies manage their supply chain, uh, their warehousing. Sorry, not their supply chain, warehouse fulfillment, and it's really 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 cool. And it's just a big nest, a big square box. If you look at their the, the walkthrough, the guy says, you can't see anything. But how it works is it stacks up like ants. He said he took inspiration from an ant's nest and the stacking through. So the, the robot goes through and takes a spare part, small spare parts, drops them off over here. It's really cool. It's for small parts, small parts, which I remember from my days that the you know, for the construction side or the warehouse. You know, small parts are a big part of a construction and they're a big part of a lot of industrial plants because the little components, pumps and whatever it is, wiring, cabling, they need to be stored. And the lay down areas and the storage for the units are just packed with stuff. And, and this was really cool. I don't know, again, I'm not saying this is something she needs to pick up, but if she's aware of it and her, you know, look at companies local being, maybe you become a, consultant to help them with their spare part movement of spare parts and inventory, um, maybe in your local market. Four Kites out of Chicago, they raised 100 million in March this year for its global supply chain visibility platform. I don't know the specifics. Neighbor out of Utah raised 53 million in April 2021 for its platform that allows access to repurposed, underutilized or vacant space. So I'm thinking Again, back to the warehouse thing, you know, you're raising money. There's something helping companies. It's almost like the, the shared trade space, that shared warehouse space. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. And I think it's related because of the repurposing it for residential, commercial. You got to think that they're using it for supply chain, helping companies uh, move their goods and keep store their goods. Flex out of, Chicago, out of Seattle raised $70 million in January 2021 for on-demand warehouse space. So again, these, these kind of concepts are bringing, you know, knowing that, that not everybody can afford to have a big warehouse, like the trade space, the guys I had here in Calgary, that's probably very similar. On-demand warehouse, you don't want to buy, their, their customers are Amazon and Walmart, right? They don't want to buy warehouse space. They don't want to rent these massive, and, and this is post-COVID. So man, during COVID, a lot of companies, you know, supply chain disrupted, they didn't want to get into these the big long-term lease agreements. So something like that is very smart. Let's pivot. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I, you know, the insights there are wonderful for me. It, it's helpful because I know a lot of people I can, I can uh, share some of those uh, supply chain issues with. So let's jump over to career advice number 175. Maria, sorry if I get the name incorrectly. Shiman, uh, Shimena Portella. I don't know, I don't know how to pronounce that Spanish, but she's a geologist from Bogota. The submission date was 26th of May, 2021, a week after, not even a week after Cheryl's uh, submission. So her job search comments were submitted via LinkedIn on the page of LinkedIn influencer, Bridget Hyacinth. I'm still looking for my door. I'm tired of being rejected. I'm thinking and stop living. So I, I think she's been pretty frustrated. Going back, if you look at her career, she's 19 years as a geologist working for oil companies in, in, in uh, Latin America, including Mexico. I got to imagine she was responding to something because, you know, Cheryl, Cheryl Bridget Hyacinth posts oftentimes you know, advice for people, how to, how to overcome the long periods of rejection and so forth. So she's written this as I think in that vein, but I don't know the specific, I didn't, I didn't say Bridget's post. 
I couldn't find you. I couldn't, Maria, I couldn't find your profile. I didn't save it back then. So I don't know specifically the details. I don't have the history. I know you were a geologist. That's what I wrote down. Unfortunately, I don't have your profile because your name is very common in the mid <laughs> I literally in Latin America and South America, I cannot find your profile. But anyway, what I did give back then, similar to many as Gary Vaynerchuk, I recommended she start with the crushing it book. Uh, I give examples of a few of the style. I think Mimi, Mimi, I can't remember Mimi's last name, but again, it's focused on entrepreneurship and, and, and pivoting, changing. And then the November 2008, Dubai, the keynote speech in Dubai, a reference to that. And I think the reason being, because, you know, it, it was looking at your own back, you know, the, Gary, in that, in that um, keynote in Dubai, one of the things he said that kind of sticks with me is people are always looking outside of their country, outside of what, what, what they can do outside. And he, he kind of very much said, look, you've, in your own back door here in the Middle East, you have a tremendous opportunity. I think what I, my, maybe my, my thought thinking then was, look, you know, Maria, your home country, there's a lot of innovation in Colombia. And that's what I was kind of looking, looking at your own home country and why my next comment here is SoftBank. SoftBank got my attention or SoftBank's got everyone's attention and for various reasons. But back then in May, 2026, uh, May, 2019, they had committed to a tech fund, a $5 billion Latin America 10th tech fund, but specific to her country. They had invested in a company called Rappi it's a delivery startup. They invested a billion. So, you know, delivery, this is delivery as in, you know, in goods and uh, Cheryl, her and Cheryl should get together because it's just supply chain, you know, like delivery, like uh, it's a FedEx type thing, but just making it better. So a billion dollars is a massive investment and that's in Colombia, but I think they have a landscape of presence across uh, Latin America or South America. And then I, as I said, I go to AngelList. AngelList can provide a lot of information about startups in the community. I know she's an oil and gas specialist, but I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the pivoting out of oil and gas. I know you're 19 years in oil and gas. I think I had just as many years. I had 18 years working overseas, Russia, Kazakhstan, and Dubai, and Qatar. I know what it's like to live and, and, and fully depend on one sector. That was oil and gas for me and mining. So I went to AngelList for her, and specifically Brazil, Brazil as a country had 81 open roles back then. Now they've currently 73. And I know Brazil's had a tough time with COVID. The lower numbers might be an indication of that across North America, uh, South America. Colombia had 59 back then in May, 2019. And today, 43 open roles listed on the site. So some decline there as well. I don't know the specifics. Uh, Argentina had 46 back then, now 51. So a little bit of uptick. Uh, post COVID. Chile, 20 open roles back then, now 21. The reason I picked those four countries is because I, there's so much, there's a lot of smaller countries and they just don't come up. You know, startups, AngelList is a, started in North America, but it's, it's, it's right across the globe now. But, uh, you know, there's other countries, that I'm, I'm sure there's definitely other countries that it's not about to picking other countries or not. Those are just the four that stuck out as the, the numbers that make sense. The low number indicates huge, I think it creates huge opportunity for South America. It did then, and I think it still does today. High level investment by SoftBank in 2019. And I just, I Googled it to find out where SoftBank, they just committed in June of this year, another 5 billion. So they're up to 10 billion in their tech fund focus. So they see value, you know, it's a huge potential, huge market. I don't know, I think the population is well over 250 million across uh, South America or no, because of Brazil itself has got 150 million. So big population, big potential. So back then again, um, as it with always, as with Cheryl Norris and supply chain, I try to be relevant. What would be relevant to her oil and gas? A lot of innovation, everyone, most people know, you know, the tech innovation is, 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 is allowed, you know, oil and gas companies survive through the 2000s from peak oil now to just, you know, they can get oil better and faster with less resources. COVID's hit that, uh, you know, made that clear. But some innovation in the back office or helping, you know, TACIES, production optimization software. There's a couple of, couple of companies here in Calgary that work on that. I don't know them specifically. I just, I've seen some funny announcements in the past, but back then, Novi Labs, AI-driven well planning and forecasting software. So 
artificial intelligence to help you know the 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 the, the reservoir engineers people like her geologists uh, to help them do their job better and you know what's predictive analytics for energy monitoring companies salugen replaces petroleum based products with plant derived substitutes so that would be pretty cool uh, i don't know you know how that fits i didn't look in details but again if you've got oil and gas experience and you know where the oil is used if there's a plant based derivative uh, that replaces the oil as a petroleum base, but still the use case, I think that'd be very relevant to some of the oil and gas experience, getting to know that. Innovaptive, connective workforce platform for asset intensive industry. So it's, uh, I, I don't, I think it's dealing with oil and gas mining companies and that, that you know, that kind of industry and big, big industrial plants, you know, her experience there could play, I don't know. I mean, you have to do the deep dive, you have to do the deep dive and learn the tech and see the applicability. And just like with Cheryl, I looked at the landscape of venture capital companies. And I just gave a list. I, I didn't just go, you can't Google this stuff. You have, to, you have to research it under Crunchbase or LinkedIn and different, different sources and piece it together and from funding announcements. But so I, I, I lumped it by Colombia, Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico, and Chile. And she, she had some experience in, in Mexico. So that's kind of why I get the relevant there. So I looked at the... These five different startups, uh, venture capital companies in uh, Colombia, Vellum or Vellum, they're digital startups. I, I didn't, I couldn't find any oil and gas or any kind of related. Simply, Simply is a Simply is a, is a fintech bank. They just invest, you know, there's no real portfolio there. Chorus Capital is an alter, it looks like from alternative modes. By the way, these are all in Spanish. So I think only one site, Magma, had an English option. The rest didn't. They were just all in Spanish. So I just had to guess, had to guess what some of these were. Boris Capital, and it looks like alternative investments. Impulsa, it's an agency for, I had, to, I had to Google, I had to translate this one, but Impulsa is an agency for entrepreneurship and innovation. So, you know, she's 19 year career, Maria. Go to these places, and this is in your country, and, and just see, you know, how you can help entrepreneurs and transfer some of your knowledge. I, you know, you, there may be startups in oil and gas there. I wouldn't be surprised if there were. Magma, tech-focused. Uh, there were three logistics plays, Nuvo, Cargo, Kubo, and Rappi Boy. You know, logistics, again, this is as close as I can get to oil and gas because most of the companies in Magma's portfolio are tech plays. So if you're not familiar with tech, it's really hard. So then for Brazil, Argentina, and Chile, I gave examples of uh, local tech uh, also a local uh, venture capital companies that I, I didn't look at details of these ones because they're in different countries. And then the last thing, the last thing I said to Cheryl, uh, Maria Portala is uh, think like an entrepreneur. And I gave her a little, this is, this is a copy and paste from what I wrote to her. What if you combined your 19 plus years of oil and gas experience with learning about the latest SaaS products, which would be applicable to oil and gas, and provide consulting advice to Latin American oil companies. I mean, this is where I found Think Eco Patrol. Oh, so I said Think. Think of think companies like Eco Patrol, Petrobras, which is a big Brazilian company, Impresa, uh, Americas, Petrobras, YPF, Petrolera, uh, Monterico, Pemex, which is a big Mexican one, and she worked in Mexico, Palos Energy, and, or Repsol in Spain. So Repsol owned YPF in Argentina. And then the Argentinians took it away from uh, Repsol. And I think there was a billion, there was some kind of compensation thing. But you know, just, these are oil and gas companies I could find in her region. But be the expert, right? Take your 19 years and, and instead of being discouraged by the loss of luck of, like I, I was in the same boat. I lost my job, low oil prices. I can get it. You know, I get where you were as a geologist. That's more exploration side. If the companies cut their CapEx budget, I get that. Then the last thing was the Gary Vee podcast he, with Tim Ferriss. And Tim Ferriss, many people will know, he's the author of The 4-Hour Workweek. And during this podcast with Gary, which was actually a YouTube uh, as well, he, re he reposted it on the Gary Vee, um, Ask Gary Vee or some Gary Vee show. Anyway, and in, the, in, in there was the book Tim Ferriss referred to, as he just wrote in 2017, where he just wrote, writ, written it not too long before this podcast, is it called The Tribe of Mentors. So, you know, he's an entrepreneur, he's very entrepreneurial focused, 
with the theme of me saying, sure, hey, Maria, look at the entrepreneur landscape potential for you. What would I do different for, for Maria? You know, oil and gas focus, you know, what would I do different today as the addendum? Oil and gas pivot. You know, I've seen so many, I've done the podcast. My, my, I myself have pivoted from oil and gas, although I still have a love for it. And whenever I get on my podcast, the Calgary Business Podcast, anyone who talks oil and gas, I can talk oil and gas. And if they're doing innovation together with technology together with that, I can even talk that even better. It's, it's just a lot of fun. But the pivots, many people uh, of my podcast, the guests of my podcast, have pivoted from oil and gas. Calgary was hit hard. The Alberta community was hit hard from oil and gas declines in the past. Many key people recognize that before. OT Brewery, Mike and Kerry Korosowski started their own microbrewery. He's a long time, Mike was a long time oil and gas uh, guy. I don't know specifically because I, I interviewed Kerry. Yoga Nova Studio, Natalie St. Hilaire, she was an oil and gas, I think she was a geologist as well. She pivoted, opened her own uh, uh, yoga studio. Mellon Real Estate Inspection, Tyrone Mellon started his own, uh, he was an oil and gas guy. It's, he just he was out looking at real estate and you know he's tired of getting laid off from oil and gas uh, companies. So he decided to inspect the real estate, he became an expert. He did a deep dive in learning how to inspect property before they get sold, residential. It's pretty cool to learn that. And then, you know, micro certifications. Go out there and find, you know, they're, they're, the greed. The greed gives micro certifications and they raise a ton of money off of that. Guild education, they're, they're, they're repivoting, retooling the workforce, the mid career workforce. Articulate. Articulate just for learning and development, they just raised 1.5 billion and they're out there training the workforce, learning, training and learning platform for corporate America, not just corporate America anymore, it's the globe. They're literally a 17 year old company who just raised for the first time, 1.5 billion. I, I, I wanna articulate this for, the, for those listeners out there, for their viewers. And they just find local colleges. You know, I, I had the, the Bow Valley College here in Calgary and they focus on these one to two year micro certifications, just to get people back redeployed into the workforce. Calgary is very important because the oil and gas industry has been hit hard for, since 2008 and then 2014 and again, you know, today. And then, you know, look at the global landscape. Her experience, Maria's experience in the oil and gas sector is valuable to the things that are happening today on the global, on the global, on the climate change initiatives. Exxon Mobil, recently, recent, this is re real recent, activist hedge fund nominated three board members just back in June. I think it was May, they got two, and then they got one more nominated in June. You know, that's a huge, huge for a big company like Exxon Mobil to get to, to facilitate change. Shell, Dutch court recently claimed that they weren't doing enough on climate change. I was just thinking May. They're not doing enough. They got to do more. BBC World Service podcast, 9th of July, just, just aired. And they had, they had Lord Brown on. Many people, if you don't know Lord Brown, he was, uh, I think it's John Brown. He was a former BP CEO for many years. Um, you know, he, he's now turned a climate, he's, into, he's a climate change supporter. And he was told that. You have left the church, which is the church of oil and gas. I just love that. And then the other one is Mark Carney. Mark Carney is the former head of, of Bank of Canada, the Bank of England, and he's recently joined Brookfield Asset Management, who's a big, you know, venture capital investment, whatever, private equity fund. And he's the head of ESG, or Environmental Sustainability and Governance, and Impact Fund Investing. So. You know, these, these are trends that are happening in your area, Maria. Like, I get it. Oil and gas has let you down. It let me down. There's still a lot. There's a lot of cool things happening that could apply your skills. Um, you know, from my, I mentioned earlier, the oil and tech, when, when oil and gas and oil and gas and tech get together, I love it. And I get them on my podcast. These are some of the guests I've had on my podcast. Crux OCM. Um, you know, I've had, I've had, uh, uh, Knox, uh, I'm, I'm losing my mind here, but you know, Crux OCM automated uh, pipeline monitoring system, and uh, gosh, I'm, the name is slipping me for, for now, but referred to as RIPA, Robotic Industrial Process Automation. Now, for many years, 
oh my gosh, well, I'm, I'm losing my mind. I'll come back to that. Integra Data and Analytic. Uh, Babak Shafi was on my podcast. They're using AI or artificial intelligence, machine learning, the data to predict maintenance on, on the pipeline, on the pipes, and then also to understand the integrity of the asset uh, itself, the pipes, the, the pipes. So very cool. CO2 energy. I had uh, Paul Otto and um, also an Italian, or Gabriela Sanchez, I think she's from Spain. They're taking, they're converting carbon dioxide to, uh, to carbon monoxide. So it's really cool technology. And the last one's Endeavor, Endeavor Technologies. This is really, I mean, Brad Reiser, thank you for the, bringing this because this was a very uh, stimulating podcast using artificial, artificial augmented reality and virtual reality simulations using goggles, 3D, 3D graphics to simulate well production, well performance. The, the, the graphics that they use are the same as those, the, it's called Unreal Engine, the same as the Fortnite, the, the game Fortnite. So the tech is pretty cool. Um, but that's really helping the virtual reality for uh, oil and gas companies to understand what's going on in the well. And the last thing, what else would I say uh, to Maria? You know, oil and gas, I needed to look at not just oil and gas companies, because it's not easy to find oil and gas, renewable energy, related innovation, recent funding announcements. I had I just looked the last couple months, Tau out of Germany, they raised 10 million euros for its manufacturing tech for electrification of transport and decarbonization of energy. That was just in July last this week. And the reason I say this is because it's where they going back to the green, the climate change, decarbonization of energy, her understanding of both worlds can play out like Lord Brown from, from uh, you know, um, like Lord Brown, it can play out well, your understanding of both worlds. And let's go back. I want to go back to this. OCM, uh, I had it and I lost it. Vicky Knott. Sorry, Vicky. No disrespect. I just, my mind, but that's Vicky Knott from OCM. She's in, been on two of my podcasts. Okay, 12, 12, formerly Opus 12. They raised 57 million for its tech, again, to convert CO2 emissions, carbon dioxide emissions into essential products normally made by fossil fuels. So I got to imagine, similar to the other one making from petroleum product based to plant-based, same products, so plastics and other, you know, plastic-like, making, removing the carbon element to it. They raised 57 million. This was just earlier in July. Ion Energy out of India, 3.6 million, not a lot, but not a lot, but their smart battery management platform is getting attention of electric vehicles, whether it's in the warehouse or on the road, they're getting people's attention and it's, it shows from their, the, 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 some of their customers. Orbital Sidekick out of San Francisco raised 16 million for its sensors, hyperspectral sensors for the oil and gas. It sounds, you know, I just, the oil and gas side of it made sense. Sensors, I, I don't really know what they do, but they raised 16 million for that. CISG Plasmonics out of Houston, hydrogen fuel cell technology. So you know, this is the clean tech mixed with old tech and new tech and oil and gas tech and bringing it. These are just a sample, a few samples, not, not, the, not everything out there. So I'm gonna stop sharing that. And I wanna just conclude because I think, I think it's important, um, you know, from, from some of the, the innovation that's happening in your space, whether it's Cheryl or Maria, look at the SaaS or innovation that's applicable to your job function. So there's one or two individuals that have watched, watched my past episodes of this channel. They know I've mentioned the benefits of being aware of and becoming knowledgeable about the SaaS or the software as a service that is applicable to your job function. So Cheryl, Maria, I, I can't, you know, I can't tell you to look at tech. I can tell you that I can suggest to you if you become familiar with that, you know, the, 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 that software that helps you, would help you do your job better. Think of the people like you doing that job as well. So I'm not talking about the mechanical engineering that is used to manufacture products down or the downhole tools used by oil and gas drilling engineers. I'm talking about the technology that can allow a supply chain expert to predict when inventory levels may be too low or the efficient routing of spare parts through a city or through the country or across the globe 
that your your customers probably ask for that. They want to they want to avoid disruption to their operations. You know, let's think of the oil and gas technology that allows a specialist to use data science, the data to tell the story, to predict more accurate uh, corrosion of the pipe, like the, the Babak Shifi and his team over at Integra. They can schedule the repairs and maintenance to avoid, to reduce the minimum, to minimize the downtime. If you can predict the schedule when you need to maintenance, you can predict the time, a lower time, low staff, less disruption to your client. Normally, you maybe you plan it around um, the time, you know, they're normally shutting down the oil, the, 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 the maintenance of the, the uh, pipeline itself or the maintenance of the drilling rig. You know, the, if you correlate, if you can correlate that better, you'll save everybody more time and money. So I say this SAS, curiosity and awareness. In many fields today, the innovation is rapidly changing. It's hard to keep up with. No one individual can keep up with the changes. And you know, when I asked uh, about how her team, one of my guests on my podcast, Tessa Maymar from Our Media, I asked, how did your team keep up? So, so her business is, is media, social media marketing. And I asked, how did your how does your team keep up with all the rapid changes in the marketing business? And she was on episode not too long ago, episode 302. Uh, Tessa said this. I asked my staff to remain curious and open to such innovation. Learn enough to see if there's relevancy to adopt for us or that we can apply in the businesses of our customers. We can, we can suggest for our customers. This is definitely paraphrased somewhat, but, but I can think you can appreciate the intent. I'm not talking about learning in, 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 de in detail every single software out there applicable to your, your work function. Just be curious and, and try to create more awareness than, you know, than, than, than the other candidates, someone who's competing for the same job. Next time when I'm asked, will you review my CV? I will immediately respond with, what SaaS are applicable to your current job function? And what have you done to ensure that you are sufficiently aware of such SaaS, of such SaaS that can help your current employer, your customers, or improve the level of discussions that you can have in a job interview? Thanks for listening and stay safe.